What's up, Hollywood Drag Racer Man? Two days after the Derby Tuesday, run rolled myself down here in Monroe, Georgia. Came to holler at my buddy Steve down here, and uh, he got some exciting stuff he got in the pipeline. He wasn't working on, wanted me to show me, get me down here, told me to bring my motorcycle. I don't know, he don't be talking about making, making on, working on no motorcycles all of a sudden, but uh, you know, he asked me to bring it down here and I'm gonna see what he got cooking. And as soon as I find out what he got going on, I'm gonna let y'all know. But look, I'm sorry about all this camera movement. I'm trying to find the keys to the trail. I'm all discombobulated over here a little bit, but uh, we're gonna get it all figured out. Got these glasses, let me see what. And so, you know, it's day two, man, and congratulations to myself once again, man. We knocked off them boys up there, my buddies up there in, uh, in uh, Louisville at the Ohio Valley Dragway Pro Ultra 460. I'd like to thank the CC Power Sports, Fast Time Motorsports, Cooper Performance, Cooper for Performance for making it happen for us, sponsoring the Wheeler Racing Fabrication Team for also making it happen, putting on the event up there at the Ohio Valley Raceway staff. We sure appreciate the hospitality, man. Uh, let me take y'all on up in here. Let me let y'all meet my buddy here, Steve here. Yeah, we down here. This is Monroe, Georgia down here. Not right across the street, man. You know, if you're working on a shop, have your own car shop, it's shoot, be cool. You walk across the street, he got him old Dairy Queen over there right at his shop. And uh, this is the SK Perform, SKJ Performance Engineer down here in Monroe, Georgia, man. This dude right here is one of the toughest guys out here in motorsports, man. You walk in here, you don't see nothing but trophies, pictures, a lot of innovation, a lot of history here, man. Look at there. He got so many trophies out the whole dang waiting area. He done had to turn to his trophy showcase, I guess. But uh, that's what you get when you have quality work, quality craftsmanship. Come to a shop like this. He's doing my race car, I mean, my street rod right now. And uh, got a lot of legacy with racing here, man. So let me go out here and get y'all meet my buddy Steve. Yeah, I know y'all tripping out wondering why I'm down in my car, buddy. How shop with my motorcycle. But look here, we in there. And we talking about two-step bus, man. man. I'm down here in Monroe, Georgia with my homeboy. Y'all see him on my motorcycle. I know y'all see this sign all the time. Y'all be asking me, who is this? But well, it's him right here, man. Who we got right here, man? Steve Kirk. Well, yeah, we are down here in Monroe, Georgia. And this is the owner, operator, proprietor of SKJ Performance, man. You've been racing forever, dude. I mean, like forever, ever. Forever and ever. Yeah, man. How long ago, man? You, we've been knowing each other, what, about 30 years? Or 30, 30 plus years. That's you, crazy, you, man. You, you've been with me from word go. Man, that is crazy, man. A lot of people yep. didn't know, man. Me and you, we did the cars. That's where we came from right. together. Mm -hmm. You built a 69 Camaro for me. And yep. then I ended up driving another car you had built for the customer. But man, I learned so much from racing with you. It was crazy. Now here we down here again, talking about a dang motorcycle. You done came and told me to bring the bike. You got something you want to show me, right? Yeah, what we gonna, got, man? We're gonna try to incorporate this little, my little uh, trick switch, trans brake switch here on this, on this, on your motorcycle, man. Uh huh. And get, get that, get that, get this thing deadly consistent on the start line. Right. So there's no flaws. So basically what we're doing here is just making the button hit, just the button where you push to push, the, the much as you can push and all that about the button, a consistent piece in your tuning. So Correct. not that we're going to make you so much quicker off the button, right. but we're just going to make sure that that's a variable that you ain't got to keep adjusting, thinking that you got Correct. too much and all that crazy stuff. Yep. If you go right here, you can look at this little button right here. Mm -hmm. And you notice when you mash this button, you hear it click. And then you can go way on in with it. So that that little when you hopped up at the track, you, you don't really know where you at right here. Uh -huh. with, with with my button, you lay your finger, you lay your thumb here. This baby's gonna do the same thing every single time. Uh -huh. Why is it why is it gonna let you do that though? What every, makes you do every, that? Everybody in the world's got the same characteristic in their, on their thumb. Uh -huh. See this radius here? Uh huh. So when you lay your thumb right here, this, this is concaved. To, to go with your radius on your thumb. So when you lay here, you mash it with the end. So you got a lot less variables here at the end of, end of your thumb uh -huh. when, when you mash the button. So you, you hit this thing the same way every single time. Because you can't you can't go no further. And you, and you can't get any quicker. So it's gonna make you quicker every, every it's gonna, it should make you quicker uh -huh. and more consistent. At least consistent for sure. For sure. Now, and then for the people who are extra quick like me, I can go negative 0200, 0300. Like you can go negative well, 300. Then we have to play yeah, something. Well, then you just come right here and loosen your jam nut up, screw this thing in, 
and the, the switch screws out, so the plunger screws out. You get more, but you, more, you get more, more travel, more, more, more travel uh -huh. into the switch, and then we can build delay then, in right there. Then you there. can build your delay in right there. So but the you class, still, but you're still gonna be consistent uh -huh. every time, even with the delay built built into the switch. Right. So for the classes that don't allow delay boxes, they still can they work a little bit of delay yeah, within the can, switch right there. That. Correct. Okay, and so and then to get in touch with you about getting the switch like that and and so forth or even checking it out because i you know me i i'm gonna I'm gonna get one my my machine guy is a fabricator and i got to take it back to him anyway so it'll be a good idea for him to be able to mount that yeah for, for sure. me because mm -hmm. deshaun does that he's a he's a, 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 a fabricator himself as well a machinist and, yep. I, and i like to see what it does because i know i have a good idea of where i am average on a tree right so that'd be a good idea to be able to give you back some feedback Correct. and tell you what's going on mm -hmm. now if i go start going super red <laughs> i would be like hey everybody gonna be trying to find this button man there you go we hey, got them we got them we go and then how you can get them is you can call you call you or go on the website can, how they can uh, get in you, touch with you, you just call me direct 770-601-6000 mm -hmm. and that's the office number right, right there that, yes sir. and uh and you got a facebook page too don't you yeah you can go to my direct uh personal Facebook, mm -hmm. Steve Kirk Jr. Mm -hmm. And man, you racing right now, the last few years, your boy been tearing it up on that dirt track, man. I mean, you've been telling me about it, but I think you said you, you kind of wish you get back to drag racing now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really all what he wants to do. Uh -huh. um, took a bunch of years off drag racing, really dealing with him. Mm -hmm. Let's walk a little bit, man. You showed me the button. Uh, Let's walk around. You know, to, uh huh. So. The dirt track thing is sort of a family history deal. We uh -huh. started dirt racing in, since 1955. Uh -huh. And I came through that era also. Uh, at a young age, I got tired of the politics. So I decided to go drag racing mm -hmm. and made a business out of it and been doing it ever since. And when, was, when did you start your drag racing business? 1993. That's about when we, I met you about yeah, right at the same time. Is mm -hmm. that? Yeah, I remember this building. Yep, that's right. And then you went you know, to the big building, and then right. you, this this is the home though, this man. Is this is the home down here, man. Yeah, this you race, feel, can't get away from a race shop now. Yeah, yeah. So nineteen, so before then, you drove you drove the late model dirt track cars and so forth. And then is that what it late was a late model? Yeah, yeah. In the eighties, uh huh. Of course, my granddaddy started in fifty five, and and my dad. And who was uh, your granddaddy first? What's his name? Grady. Grady Kurt. Yep. Number sixty six. Yep. Yep. Grady was a bad boy back then he too, wasn't man? Yep, I learned my pretty much my what I what I still do every day from him. Uh huh. And I met him. He was a super cool dude, man. He used to be there when I come down here and work on race cars with you, man. Oh yeah, exactly. the car he, pop. He was here. Yeah, he'd be here, man. And then and, and we was here twenty four hours. He was here twenty four. <laughs> you hours. ain't never lied about that. We yep. loved some drag racing. Now, as much as I knew, I know how much he loved dirt track racing, but I know he loved the drag. He loved anything that you did, though. Yeah, that's, that's what I. That's that was about what I. Already, that's I, that's the whole deal. Yeah, he loved whatever Steve Jr. did, and mm -hmm. Steve and his dad and your daddy as well. Right. And Absolutely. your daddy drove race cars too all of his life yeah he, he actually quit in uh, uh -huh. in 1987 uh-huh and uh stayed retired ever since i was surprised with that but mm -hmm. he, he stayed retired ever since i remember he was when we were racing together he was a big big supervisor plant manager Correct. universal runnel or something like that yep. that, that that place universal runnel that yeah, made the, right. the toilet fixtures and all that and he was there when that place opened in the late 60s and there when it closed around 2005 i believe it was 2005 yeah. or six he was there when it opened and closed right so now he pops he got yeah. Trey Jr. now. Yep. And yep. he and he's about everything about what Junior's doing too now. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. So oh, yeah. now, what what's the path for Junior now, man? You got you got the boy, his, man. His his direction, whichever path he wants to go. What is he feeling? He got. He's really getting. He he's really wanting to venture drag racing. Uh huh. But he still got that circle track niche, you know. He, yeah. He, and I love to watch him do the circle track stuff. He if he, if, if anybody was ever a natural at it. He is. And where they can see some of his footage, though? Because um, a lot of people he, be watching this stuff. He runs might... all over Southeast. Uh huh. Uh, he runs at Livonia um, a lot. Uh, we're, we're a little bit of everywhere, honestly. You have to keep up with our Facebook page. He's got his own Trey, Trey Kurt racing page. Uh huh. Um, and, his, and his personal page also. So right. They can they can go there and visit that. I think about a couple weeks ago. 
Me and you was talking. You said he set it on fire somewhere. He tracked, tracks, track, uh, track. That was a little local track here. Yeah. Track in, record. Yeah, set a track yep. record then. Yep, that's a that's a local track. It ain't but like 20, 20 25 minutes from a shop. Uh huh. And we have, we have a lot of fun when we go up there because so many local people that go there from right. around here. Uh -huh. just, it, and we raced there all these years. My granddad my granddaddy raced there. My daddy, I did, and now Trey. Mm -hmm. And we've all won there. <laughs> hey, that's a four, so, four, generations four generations of Kurtz that put it on the winter circuit. At, at that particular track. Yes, that's sir. crazy, man. Yeah, so it's a lot of fun. Man, to look, on, come on, walk on there. I want you all the dang trophies. I was showing these folks when we was walking and talking, man. And I, was, and I tell folks, man, you, you know, like the type of work. Let's walk through here, man. Let's go through the shop right here, man. I be telling folks the type of work. That, that the reason why you had to get what you pay for is when you deal with someone like you, it's always top quality. You know, you a stickler about, you a stickler boy about this car stuff. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. We we try to put, uh, you know, quality's always gotta come in first. If you ain't doing the best that you can do when you do the job, we ain't got enough time to do it the first time, much less redo it. <laughs> yeah. And, er and you know, everybody wants it. you know. When they come to me, I think they're looking a lot for quality. Yeah. And we and I tell y'all, I'm the first one to crown them all the time. Hey man, I'm gonna get my car, but he keep me patient, and yep. and then when I get what I get from him, I don't have to go back. Yep. I don't go yep. back. I don't have to go back talking about this, that, and the third. It's done right the first time, man. What kind of cars you got working on right here, buddy? This is a '55. We just got done with putting the motor. <clears throat> it's got a little stroker fuel injected sniper system deal on it. That is nice, man. Um, excellent cruiser right here, man. This is a. Uh, really 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 neat car yeah actually it's going home today so that is nice man this, this would be leaving today you got old impala up here like you're doing some rear and some brakes or something we're doing on pretty much full bumper to bumper on this car mm -hmm. uh, uh it's a big tire car but it's, everything is built for like a pro touring deal uh -huh. so it's gonna have coilovers on the rear a big stainless stainless exhaust system uh, it's also fuel injected with a stroker engine. Man, it's a bad uh, boy, ain't it? Boy, you have some the, bad hot rods on the street, the, ain't you, man? The list goes on, man. <laughs> We've got hundreds of these cars out there right now. Man, they be done, they be done slid up on one of them SKJ cars. They got yeah. their little good little spanking thing. Talking about that oh, yeah. old man, man. Look, at you got old Cutlass up here. Another 68 Camaro down here. It look like it's just getting some little we, nice little... Gonna we, ain't, we ain't started on this one yet. It's... it's uh, We'll be starting to hit pretty soon. And it's gonna be another LS swap motor deal. No, 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 no. It's That's an LS right. swap right yeah, there. Yeah, this is an LSA deal up there. Uh huh. And then you got another this? Super Sport 396. That ain't got no motor, but it like got a nice brake package under it. Oh yeah, this is a. Uh, this has got a 632 pump gas fuel injected engine. Uh huh. A 632 yeah. pump gas fuel injected. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, they make about a thousand horsepower. It's crazy. That is so crazy, and that's a nice old Corvette. This is this is an all original piece that we're just getting back up on his feet, uh -huh. getting it ready for. Uh, um, it's actually going up, going back to the auction. Mm. Um, customer wants to sell it, but it's a matching number three two barrels four speed, really high end piece here. He'll sell all it before original. the auction. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, so they can talk about it, somebody might be interested in this. What, yeah. what what is this car year again? Sixty-seven. Sixty-seven Corvette this, or Stingray. Yeah. Yep. Four twenty four twenty-seven, three three twos, four speed, all matching number. Sweet, sweet, the sweet. The real piece. deal. Yeah. Somebody's interested. It's like about a, it's north of one hundred eighty grand. What he's gonna want for it? All right. Cool. I I will make sure we definitely put yep. that out there. Let me just take we'll a little spin around on. All on it, all the way around. Take a little peek at it while we're here. You might as well go ahead and look at it, y'all. It's part of the 14, so we're uh -huh. fixing up all the all the little stuff to it. Man, this is a, all original, original. Yeah. Ain't no cracks on the seat in here. Uh, that's really nice, man. Yeah, it's a first class car. Real disc brake car, four wheel disc yeah. brake oh, car. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And we're actually getting in the correct calipers and all that kind of stuff going back on the car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, that is pretty cool, man. I mean, just to get the type of stuff that you get down here. You know, I come down here sometimes, it's like walking to a personal car show, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I get the behind the scenes of the car show. And then this is another nice piece I like right here too. It's Convertible '69 Camaro. Yeah, this has been a little long-term project right here, but it's coming to a close. Uh -huh. 
hopefully in the next <coughs> month or so, as long as your, you know, like your car, next uh -huh. month or so, yeah, we should be closing on both of these cars. Uh -huh. uh, this we'll, is this is all frame off deal. We handle all the paint work on it. Uh, we didn't do it in the house. I just handled it for the customer. Right, right. It was frame off. We put we'll got a supercharged LS3. Makes about 750 horsepower. Uh huh. Um, we built the full exhaust system on it. Stainless exhaust. Man, I want to. I'm gonna go. Windows, you know, the list goes on. This is a low car shifter in here as well. Uh, no, uh, that's no. a Tremec. Yeah, it's got a Tremec deal on it. Four mm -hmm. speed. Six. Six speed trimming. Six speed trimming. Mm -hmm. That's pretty neat, man. What's the suspension for for uh, it's not it's not a four link car. It's something real different you told me. Yeah, it's, it's got it's got the lift bar on it with the coilovers. Look at that exhaust system under there. What's that long uh That's your torque arm. Torque arm going from the from it, the This car is really built for daily driver number one. Uh -huh. Number two, you can pull up at any autocross and go and have a lot of fun with it. Autocrossing? What's autocrossing, man? The little course of the at the car shows. Yeah, so they put the cones out like that. Correct. Mm -hmm. Got gotcha, you racing for time. Uh, he'll be able to do all that with this piece here. Yeah, that's pretty neat. And then we got the eighty-one wet, wet Malibu wagon. We don't need to talk more about that because we don't got a whole catalog going yeah. with this. But yep. you did this car, man. We came in here and this was a grocery getter idea, man. I thought I want to spend five thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> we don't far some uh, some fast out. <laughs> yeah, I know that's right, but hey, but. It's, it's gonna be a very unique unit when you get done with this now. Hey man, people be coming here and they be like, they like the old wagon, don't they, they man? Love it. They love it. They what love is it? it? I wonder what they love about it, man. But, you know, it's different. Yeah. I, I mean, we ain't, we hadn't done one like it. Right. And I ain't seen none done like it. Plus, it's pretty cool to have a one-off deal and be sentimental to you, like like starting when I started out drag racing in. Correct. Yeah, exactly. I started out drag racing in the '81 Malibu. Yep. We're well, really driving the track in the '81 Malibu yeah. in, when I was 14, but at yep. Covington, right at the speed shop. At the speed shop. Oh, jump. Yeah. They don't remember. We used to jump off of the damn. Uh, we jumped off the star line at the 60 foot. It was about an inch or two yeah. higher than, than yeah. the racetrack. Onto the pavement. Onto man, the pavement. You remember that? Oh yeah, I remember that. Oh man, that was something else. But then was the good old days, man. Look at all these dang trophies in here, boy. You've been at this for a long, long time, man. So I gotta ask you a question. In this room, hold on, hold on. You ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna get I'm you. Gonna, so back on here, Gizmo. We're gonna get, get, hold on. Who, that, introduce yourself with me and Steve. What's your name, boss man? Gizmo. The Gizmo ain't no real name. Ain't no birth certificate on there. <laughs> Jerry Hughes. Okay, what you doing over here, Jerry? Just helping Steve out. Now, I, heard, I seen you yesterday, a day before yesterday, packing up a whole bunch of them buttons, two-step buttons. But look here, he ready, y'all. He told y'all you do is hit him up. He got plenty of them ready to ship, and he got Gizmo right here. With, with guy. He got some some, yep. uh, some packaged and ready. Got the post office boxes ready to go. Yep. Got some uh, wrap over there, bubble wrap, so it ain't going to be damaged when you get there. And, right. and Steve ain't going nowhere. I'll tell y'all that right now. <laughs> Yep. Hey, look here, man. So when you look around this room, man, I see so much that I'd be proud of myself, honestly. I mean, I, I don't even know where I would start, you know, like saying which one of these meant the most to me, though. Like, but when you think about that in this room of all these accolades, all these years of racing, all this legacy, you know, all these, you know, family crashes and everything. I mean, you got so much memorabilia i mean some of this you won yourself some yeah, of it looks I'll, like your dad I'll, stuff nah, and your family's this it, all of it's mine this right this, this is my granddad is right here this is your granddad is yeah this is a 1962 and 63 he won uh championship with this deal here it's track championship yeah yeah that's the, the, those are his trophies from back then Wow. 1962 and, 63. And, and these are the cars. Hey, in Lithonia. That's where this is. In Lithonia, Georgia? Lithonia, Georgia. This track here was in Lithonia, right outside the city limits. Wow, man. Mm -hmm. That's that's some serious heritage. A lot of us didn't even know that. Look, here's a here's the thing right here. No, it's, it's Those are just some old stickers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But look, man, so this granddaddy stuff. And all the rest of this you rest, did. Mm -hmm. So point me to the direction of the thing that meant the most to you of all this. Mm, man. Or the I've event. Got, I, I've got a connection with every one of these trophies. I can walk up to each one of them. And that, that's what's cool about having something to, that you remember things by. I, I pretty much can buy, get, tell. 
I can remember everything that went on during that event. Mm -hmm. I remember every bit of that. Pro probably, the, probably the biggest one that's. Uh, oh man, these these Orlando trophies. These are probably about the hardest ones in the world to ever to ever achieve. Win. There, yeah, win low et. We set low et a bunch of times and won a couple times. You got five, those six of those guys up there. Yeah. That was when you had you was doing the Corvette, wasn't it? Yeah. That yeah. ten five Superman. And then, then yeah, that Superman trophies up yonder. Behind the tree up mm -hmm. there. Yeah. That Superman was a bad boy. That, that thing that just told was, us. That was 1995 there. We we set low ET, run it up, and got best engineer car in 1995 in Orlando. And that was with the Corvette? That was with the Superman car. That Corvette. car you just told the to tie about 300 feet, boy. That was about sure hauling the mail. Well, <laughs> he's mm -hmm. having big, big fun with that car right there. That was a showstopper, though, man. So what? Yep. So these are the, the ones that you remember with the Superman. But like you said... It's so much history in here. But well, we, and all these weren't Superman trophies. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, that, those were the Camaro, the that, Outlaw 10-5 car. Outlaw car. Yep. Ferguson's Racing, wasn't it? Something like yep. that? Yep. Was it Ferguson? Kurt Ferguson. Kurt Motorsport. Ferguson Motorsport, yeah. I remember that, that 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 deal. That was a really nice car. You went on to do a split one the Corvette with him as well, didn't you? Yeah. Yep. And you, know, you won some races with that one. I was with but, you one time when you won a race over in Dar uh, Orangeburg. We were together. But this trophy here. Uh-huh. That's probably the one that means about the most. Wow. That, that was a hardcore deal to win right there. What is that one? So tell me the story about this one, man. Because you said you know about whatever happened that day when you won it. So talk to me uh, about it. Th this is a check that come with it. So this is going to tell you what's up. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that, that'll help you remember right there. I actually it? remember pretty good right there. Hey, man, I sure does, man. And then, look, that the 3000 one, that must have been one that of the was, first ones. Yeah, look at that, 1996. That was your first there big you money go. win, wasn't it, man? Yeah. Oh, that's like putting the first dollar bill on your <laughs> business license when you get your shop, man. You got trophies from everywhere, man. But that, that nitrous jet is a super nice trophy, man. Yeah, Speed, Speed Tech had this made for that race. Mm -hmm. And it was... Uh, Carolina Dragway. Yep. Battle of the Big Dogs champion. It was an all nitrous race. Speed Tech, May 22nd of 2010. I was 40 years old, 40 <laughs> years old at 2010 at that yep. time. But me, me and Mike Hill went to the finals, and uh, anyway, it just turned out to be just a, I mean, it, it was a hardcore race. Now that's a whole start nother, line, that's a whole nother, line. whole nother world right there. You start talking about Mike Hill, Steve, Kurt. Yeah. And man, a lot I used, of fun. it was a lot of fun, man. Y'all made a lot of tracks, a lot of revenue through the years, man. Mm -hmm. Just was doing y'all deals. Mike's still out there doing his deal. You and I was just talking about flirting with the idea, maybe even trying to get some of that going again, because people still want to see some they good still, drag they racing. They do, man. They, they sure do. You know, and Mike's still out there doing his deal with the, I don't know exactly. I mean, it's a lot of, lot of grudge racing, a lot of, uh, it's grudge in it that they're yeah. doing mostly. Mm -hmm. I heard they just That's had 20. a yeah. big yeah. boy race up in Tennessee somewhere, didn't they? I mean, they turned it out up there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, I still remember the days we used to do all that racing, me, you, Mike, and all us on the street, and then we done converted from the street to the track i mean but now we trying to get you know the kids off the street with the racing so what oh, yeah. could we do you know what do you feel like we could potentially do with, or the tracks or the city legislation anybody could do probably maybe help you know because when you, you know something that just made me think about what you said when we was talking about granddaddy's trophy right that was in Lithonia, georgia right i mean that wasn't so far to go to go racing or do something but right. now like if you don't want to race on the street technically you do you have to go two hours mm -hmm. from atlanta you know you got to go about two hours if you want to do a good donut or spin out or something like that you yeah. go you got to go two hours nobody's ain't gonna nobody's gonna do that you know when they want to make a bet they go up the road it's on what about a local a more local place like you think like a more local facilities smaller little facilities would be good like that they make like car parks or something. What do you think about something like that? I don't know. Uh, That's Hampton like, did. Hmm? Hampton Raceway has a thing every yeah, weekend. Yeah, you know, we talking about Friday like night Friday night drag. drags. Yeah, yeah, Friday night drags. Yeah. yeah. That's a good deal for sure. There. Uh -huh. like they still it, doing yeah. that? Yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, there's one solution, but I think that even then we still got to have more accessibility to it because, man, this is what we got going on right now. It's kind of crazy, but yeah. they ain't our problem to fix, really, but. I always like to ask questions like that. And man, you know, I've known you for so long. 
you've been innovative in a lot of things in drag racing as well. And we got a lot of trophies out here, but as far as the technology and the development stuff, what are one of your most prized things that you've done that you felt like you brought into the game of Man. racing? Or one of the things that really helped you the most? I, I, well, hold on. That's a trick, trick question right there. It gives folks. He might. I might be letting a recipe out talking about that though. I mean, you know, man, hard, hard to really say, man. I mean, you know, you, when you're racing, you just don't really think. Of, if you're out there racing to win, you really ain't thinking about a whole lot of things except how to make your program better, consistent. Not try to work on it as much. Uh, as far as tearing the, tearing the engine programs up, mm -hmm. making those th making your program live, um, a lot of times that's hard to do when you max power and everything. But oh man, um, this little dude right here, yeah, help a lot. Oh yeah, because sometimes they about this little dude won me a lot of races. That little dude made you a lot of races because you have been you always were good on the tree now. Yep. But down yeah. here in the south, you had to be because they had to, you had to be you had to be man. But, but my whole thing was don't give me no double O numbers. Yeah, always give me team numbers. So if I can go red, I need to. You need cushion. You need a cushion. So yeah. therefore, you get a button that's deadly consistent that does the same thing every time. Right. And then you you know you got your uh, delay box in a car that'll that'll handle your other deal. Man, look here, man. So what better way? Give me a team. That what better way to end up to wrap this up? Because we started talking about the button and we ended by the button. So he said yeah. you want to get it right. Holler at him. He got yeah. something to get you some consistency right there. Got the right Steve here. Kurt series right there. You can order it right here. Call and Gizmo. He gonna guarantee you get it there, right? We we'll get we'll get it there. All right, ten four, man. <laughs> All right, Steve, so we talking about this button, and then you had the backdrop because you had something to do with these buttons before. Yeah, I used to sit this in the back of my trailer mm -hmm. and give people this other steering wheel ain't here, but this right. is going to give people a good idea of how this thing works. So when you get your button, it's going to basically look just like this right here. Uh huh. So we just take, you, take this off the back. The little hole here, you know, th this was a common wheel for years. Mm -hmm. Now they got the aluminum wheels. The Grand GT was spoke. Yeah, yeah, idea. but th this was designed to take this, go in here, and that pretty much indexes it. And then you're just taking uh, let's see here. I put my glasses on here. Well, you got the same problem I got. <laughs> I need uh, on this on this jig right here. I need to buy another hand or two. There we go. So anyway, you just put this this uh, boat back in the back side right here. Uh -huh. Tighten it up, and you come right here, and, and you can rotate this all the way to here. Somebody, you know, d different thumb lengths, right. of course. You can go to here or here, which always ran mine about right there. Mm -hmm. And you lay your hand right here, you, you, you're going to hit that button with this tip, see? Mm -hmm. And that's what you want every time right there. So. That's what you want. You come right back over here and just tighten it up. And so for a lot of people, and so for a lot of people, they you know who drive race cars, most of us try to, we pocket here on our left That's drive right. hand. We riding in the pocket here because we don't like to pull yeah, the stern exactly. and all that stuff. Right. So we go here, and this is kind of our neutral guy. That's right. So we here, pow. That's it. And back then, fit quicker some cars. You ride, you, you from go. there to the parachute lever from yeah, there, boss. That, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So that, that, that was smooth as silk right there, man. I stuck my finger right in there and I found it. Bam. Yep. And then your two wires that activates your trans brake. Mm -hmm. You just use your, com your common here. And then you normally open wire here. Mm -hmm. And you're sitting ready to go. And so it's only and, two wire deal. Correct. So yeah. the other you can do three if it's all dependent if you're deactivating something with, uh -huh. the, with the third one there. So. Okay. So normally just the two top. The two top. Common mm -hmm. and neutral. Common and uh, yeah. normally open. No, normally open, okay. Yep. Then you always want to take your wires and tie them back to the spoke over here. Okay. I always use a little Adele clamp or something on the back side of this boat, but all you can drill a little hole right here, pull your wires back over here. Mm -hmm. That way the wire ain't pulling on your button all the time. You're turning and laying it off to the side and things like that. And, and more of a accordion, accordion uh, cord yeah. from there down yeah, to you, the... You pull it back to the center of your column mm -hmm. at that point, see. 
So man, where my buddy at back over here? Cause man, I ain't seen the old Jonathan lately, man. Where he at? Is he that's, is he interview shy or what, man? Yeah, that's my right and left hand right here. Where is he? Come on over here, man. Introduce yourself, man. Who we got right here, man? Jonathan. Man, what hey man, you've been down here with Kurt for how long now, man? Uh, six years, I think. Man, where'd you come from? Uh circle track. Uh, circle track? NASCAR or asphalt? Dirt track? Where about? Asphalt. Okay, so uh, what what was you like a fabricator or fabricator, something? Fabricator, crew chief. Wow, everything. It's pretty good resume, man. Yeah, yeah, you get you all get you all the way down here to Monroe working on all kind of stuff. So how does that differ what you do now than what you were doing, you know, before with the circle track stuff? I mean, obviously when you came down here, the kids driving a circle car, so I know that was probably a huge, you know, advantage to the shop to have someone as knowledgeable as you are in that genre of, of racing. Now, you know, you're doing all kind of stuff now. I miss all the. I mean, it's. Kind of the same. I mean, just all the small stuff. Uh huh. All the uh, keep everything nice and neat. Yeah, I mean, one thing. Detail. One thing about it, you are one of those detailed people. Have you been here for six years with Steve? You must be a heck of a detail <laughs> person. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, that's just that's just who he is. Though. I mean, but you right. know, for someone who wants to work for someone, I mean, and, and the quality I know that you put out because you I've seen all the work that you've done myself as well. I mean, he couldn't ask for a better guy to, to get down with and have as a left foot, right hand, <laughs> left foot, right foot, and everything else. I say that, you know what I mean? So, I mean, to have that as a guy that you work with, I mean, right. what does that mean for you, though? It's good. I mean, it means a lot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He trusts me to do all of it. Uh huh. And then, and, 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 and what are the tricks? He teach you a lot of little tricks in the process. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stuff I didn't know. Yeah. You know, especially about drag stuff. Uh huh. I didn't know anything about that when I come here. <laughs> right. So, what do you know about it now? That's secret. <laughs> Done, man. Appreciate you, boss. No problem. All right, man. Good deal. Hey, man. I'm gonna fit this up with Gizmo for a minute. You know how that Gizmo for a minute, Steve. Look here, man. We, we you know going out there. I, I got a little personal interview time with okay. Gizmo right here, man. See what he's talking about. He behind the scene, behind the scene. Look here, man. Me and Steve were talking about his prized possessions in here. You just straight flat told me you pointed up there to his boy. Yeah, that's. It lights him up every day when he comes by here from school, uh -huh. and he's uh, just a great kid. Right. He's he's clearly focused on his career, uh -huh. both racing and his future. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, he wants to be a tech. You know, he wants to to get into the building and all that stuff. And but this racing, he he's just smooth man that i know one thing y'all told me the last time we was talking you you told me now here go now check this out the kurtz made the pioneer pages the official magazine of the georgia automobile race automobile racing hall of fame association the ga g a r n h a h o f a that's a whole lot of stuff right there but they <laughs> they got the kurtz up here in the family tradition like no other on pages four to ten it's got four generations of the kurtz from 2006, Trey had just been born. So this is pretty cool to be a part. You know, I told you I was a long acronym. Look at that thing. Look how long that thing is on the back of that foot. Yeah. But man, to, to be a part of that, and then I see you down here. You you you, you, you what were you doing then as a career before? As a career as a work for John Deere. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a Monte Carlo SS 85 model. And mm -hmm. I was riding around with it. I'd uh, kind of inherited it from my sister. It needed some work and I stopped by here one day Steve was out with an old car and I stopped and I, I didn't know who he was mm -hmm. and pulled up and said hey I want to get this motor and transmission rebuilt mm -hmm. and he was with a customer to give it an estimate and all that and he said looked at me he said can you you know come back tomorrow we're trying to get this closed up and I said yeah I'll come and I came back tomorrow and uh, he told me like it was what I had in it you know it was all stock you know there's no need rebuilding a 305 <laughs> and he had this motor ready to go yeah complete ready to go and uh that's how our friendship started stuck that motor in and no job too small or no job too big right he, he does it and he does the small job with much intense care Sorry. care then he does the big job right too. and you know it doesn't matter who you are what you are where you from he does it small medium big and, and it doesn't it matter to jam him. up too and jam up and jonathan that works for him 
that man's a fabricator. He can figure it out. And they figure it out. Right. And, but hit, to see him, his son, that son lights his face up. I went, he just, son just set a track record at Winder a couple of weeks ago. I was there. And I wish I would have had a video of when he set the track record, won the pole, and won the race. Triple deal. Triple deal. Triple deal. Yeah, he, he works. Smoked, he, he smoked them too, boy. Yeah, yeah he smoked them. Yeah, he works all week. Steve does, and his son goes to school. Son's just, you know, tenth grader. Yeah, he's 15, 16 years old. Sixteen, 16 years 16 old now. Years he just old. started driving. Him and my son about the same around the same and age. We worked all Saturday, getting his tires ready, getting everything ready. And as soon as his son gets done racing, what's he do? Cleans that thing up, gets it ready for the next race. Now that we, he's going to Dakota this yeah. weekend, we hope to. Let's do it again. Do it again. Man, I might come up there. Boy, I might bring my <laughs> camera up there, come up there, and see what y'all doing, man. But look here, man, Gizmo. I appreciate it, man. A little behind the scenes, behind the scenes. And uh, like I said, I'm going to clock out of here. I got to go meet some money and see what's going on with some other opportunities. That's my second time out of here. But, uh, you know, I got caught and they showed me some more good stuff. And I wanted to let y'all see it because... You know, I, this button does feel pretty good. You know, it, it, it fits. You know, it fits like you can feel yourself the same spot. I mean, I'm looking at some for myself as far as a reference spot that I can do every time. And like Steve said, you know, it's, it's it's elements to being quick on your finger, and some of that's trade secret. But at least having something consistent like this will at least take one variable out of your hand and uh, maybe give you some consistency there and quick make you a little quicker and get you to the win circle because you say. If he's telling you, he must know something, because I tell you, all the way around the wall, ain't nothing but accomplishments in racing. So that's it speaks is Hollywood, for HollywoodDragRacer.com. This is going to be on TV. Hollywood Drag Racing is going to be on YouTube. So y'all check it out. This is my main man, Steve Kurt. Man, he's helped me win a lot of races on the street and the track. So I know he the man. And if you need something from him, you're going to get A1 stuff every time. We'll talk to y'all later. Peace.